Grade 4 math number 57. Solve equivalent fraction problems with a table or a picture. All right, let's do a real quick little review here. And remember that equivalent fractions are fractions that represent the same amount. It's two fractions that represent the same quantity. They could look different, but they still represent the same quantity. Okay? It's like one half and two fourths. It's the same quantity that's being represented. I want you to also remember that when you have an equation like this, the 2 and the 3 are the factors of 6, and 6 is the multiple of the 2 or the 3. The factors make up the multiplication problem. The 6 is the multiple. It's the answer. See? Okay, so knowing that, let's take a look at what Emma's up to. Emma cut a cherry pie in half. See? There's two halves. Then, she cut each of the halves into three pieces. Boom, boom. So now there's three pieces in this half. Boom, boom. There's three pieces in that half. She and her mother ate four pieces. What fraction of the pie is left? So drawing the picture can help you visualize what is going on. Okay? So let's look at this. The pie was cut into two different pieces. See? This half was cut into three pieces, and this half was cut into three pieces. See that? So, if you added this half and this half, you'd have a whole pie. If you added these three pieces to these three pieces, you'd have six pieces. So now we have one whole pie divided into six pieces. And we do. Look. It's one whole pie divided into six pieces. Of those six pieces, four were eaten. So that means two were left over, right? So, we now have left two pieces of the six, right? We have two pieces left of the original six. To simplify it, we need to find what the common factors are for two and six. So, what numbers can you multiply together to get two? Well, one and two. What numbers can you multiply together to get six? One times six and two times three. So what factor do they have in common? They've got a two. So that's why we're dividing this by two. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. There's one third left. Is there one third of the pie left if they ate four pieces? Well, let's check it out. She ate, they ate one piece, two piece, three piece, four piece, right? Now, what if we looked at it the way this was, that it was in thirds? Okay, what if this was one-third, and we took this line away? This was another third, and we took that line away. And this was the other third, and we took that line away. So see how sixths can become thirds? We just take away the dividing lines. So is one-third of the pie left? Yeah, one-third of the pie is left. They ate two-thirds of it, and one-third is left. So two-six is equal to one-third when you get the common factors and reduce it. Simplify it. Let's see what Lisa's doing. She's planting a flower garden, and it has 12 equal sections. She's planting daisies in nine of the sections. Hasn't decided what's going in the other parts, but she knows nine, da nine sections are going to have daisies. So what fractions represent the daisies? So we draw our, our garden. We've got our 12 sections. We've got nine of them filled with daisies. What's the fraction? Do you know? Well, how many parts are there? How many parts do we have of how many parts? Remember how we did that? We said two pieces of six. Do we have nine parts of 12 are daisy? Yeah, nine parts of 12 are daisies. It becomes three-fourths because look, if it's not split into nine, we can split it into four parts by saying one part, two part, three part, four part. We just get rid of these cross lines here, and it becomes four parts, see? And three of them are filled with daisies. The way we can get it by, re by simplifying is we find the biggest common factors. What do we multiply together to get nine? One times nine and three times three. What do we multiply together to get 12? Well, 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4. What do they have in common? They both have a 3. So they're going to be divided by 3. So the 9 twelfths 
numerator and denominator get divided by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. And 9 twelfths becomes 3 fourths. See? It's really important to know what common factors they have, because that'll help us to divide it. All right, here's our last one. Emma baked a pan of brownies. She cut them into 24 squares. Her mother ate six of the brownies. How many are left? Well, originally, we had 24 parts of the 24 that she baked and cut, right? 24 out of the 24 is the whole pan. Six parts, see, of the 24 were eaten. Six 24ths were eaten. See, the six are missing. There's just crumbs left. So, how many are left? Well, when you subtract 6 from 24, you get 18. So we know that 18 parts of the 24 are left. 18 24ths. Okay? Now, this can be reduced because this is even and this is even and they're kind of big. So how to, how to sim simplify or reduce them? We find what the common factors are for 24 and 18. What can we multiply together to get 24, and what can we multiply together to get 18? 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Okay, those are the factors for 24. Factors for 18. 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. What factors do they have in common? They've got a 1, a 2, a 3, and a 6. So, what happens if we try using the 2? All right, let's take a look. We're going to divide the 18 24ths by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9. 24 divided by 2, 24 cut in half is 12. Look, it can still be reduced. All right, what can go into the 9 and 12? A 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. That was double work. If we use the 2, we're going to have to do it twice, okay? So we don't want to use the 2. We're not going to use the 24 or the 1 either, right? We can't use the 18. We can't use the 9 because these are not in common, right? All right, so that's going to leave the 3 and the 6. Now, we're supposed to choose the biggest one, but I'm going to show you what happens when we use the 3, okay? So now we're here. We're going to multiply the 1820, divide the 1824 by 3 to try to simplify or reduce it. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 24 divided by 3 is 8. We get 6 eighths. It can still be made smaller. 2 can go into both of these. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And we end up with our 3 fourths, but we had the double work again. Why? Because 3 wasn't big enough. You terrible three? Made us work twice? All right. The biggest common factor, the greatest common factor, okay, is six. If we use six, we just do it once quickly, rip it off like a Band-Aid, it's done. 18 24, 18 divided by six is three, 24 divided by six is four. We should have done the six in the first place. We should have gone with the biggest one in the first place. We would have had less work to do. See? So doing it the smaller way works, but you're going to have twice the amount of work, and everyone's going to be finished, and you're going to be, still be doing your work. So what have we learned from this? We have learned that 18 24ths, 9 twelfths, 6 eighths, and 3 fourths are all equivalent fractions. It's just that these aren't simplified. This one is simplified as far as it'll go, and these are not simplified, but they're all equivalent to each other. They all equal the same amount. They all mean that someone ate the six brownies out of the pan that had 24 in it. Equivalent fractions. Look for the biggest common factor, the biggest common factor they have. So 1 times 6 wouldn't work. You'd want the biggest one, like 2 times 3, for a 6. See? The biggest common factor will always help you simplify the fraction, and you'll do less work than if you use 2s and 3s and stuff like that. Okay? And like I said, you can use the 2s and 3s, 
but you're going to take twice as long. You might even have to do it three times. So, that's how we solve equivalent fraction problems with a table or a picture. And I'll see you in the next video. We'll keep talking about fractions. See you there. Bye.